Well, welcome to Reasons to Hope week 20. I'm Kate Tucker and I have been taking you through this year. We have been writing the Book of Hope together for the last 20 weeks. Can you believe that? That means that we have, let's do some math, 100, let's see how many, so five weeks, 35 times five. We have a lot of gratitudes. We have a lot of daily fives. <laughs> I'm not really good at math. It's good to see you here. Thanks so much for coming. It's always such a blessing to get this community together and share our reasons to hope. So please keep your comments coming throughout the week at Root and Vine News. You can hashtag reasons to hope to share with us what's giving you reasons to hope these days. So last week we talked about fear and fear as a sort of indicator of what our deepest hopes are, what our deepest desires are. And we decided that we might try and just let fear exist, just live with it, see what it might be trying to tell us. And so I'm curious how that's going for you because it's definitely been a bit of a challenge for me. I would love to hear from you in the comments here and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this past week has been. So um, I'm a new homeowner, I've shared with you before, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. But that doesn't stop me from running head on into a million different projects. And because I get myself so involved in things that I have never done before, but I'm super excited about, um, I don't really necessarily do the research going in. And so this week, uh, one of my big adventures included going to a local plant sale. It was a fundraiser for Let's Grow Akron, which is a community farm and co-op that's been working in the Akron area for the past 33 years, uh, making sure that people have access to food and that neighborhoods that were unfairly represented or weren't um, having a community garden space will be able to access fresh food and produce and grow it themselves. So super awesome organization. I'm going to tell you more about them another time, but I go to this plant sale at this church and I like pre-ordered and I got like an entire car full of plants and everyone's like, wow, you're like going to start a really big garden. And I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm going to start a huge garden and I've never even planted anything in my life. So I get home and my neighbor, is really uh, knowledgeable about like permaculture and regenerative farming and all this stuff, thank God. She comes over and she's like, yeah, it's really hot right now and, and the sun is super bright and you don't wanna plant those poor little baby seeds, be seedlings because they'll just uh, die. And I was like, they'll die? Oh my gosh, I just put it like, I'm going to have this amazing garden. And, and so my plants are sitting there and I decide, okay, I can't plant them yet. So what I'll do is just like paint my entire deck in between now and this evening before I plant my entire garden. So I literally got myself, I don't think I've been in a situation that I can remember recently where I was, I did not see the end. I was painting my deck yesterday from, I mean, noon until 10 o'clock last night and it's still not done. And so I had this like panicky sense in the middle of the night. I know this all sounds kind of very like, <laughs> Who cares about a bunch of seedlings in a deck? But like, I literally was waking up in the middle of the night thinking, all these plants are gonna die. It's my fault. I don't know what I'm doing. I really wanted to grow a garden. I'm afraid I'm gonna fail at all of this. And that was a tiny little fear, but it's just an instance, a sort of metaphor for all the deeper fears that I have in my life. And then I realized, well, what is really at the root of this fear? The root of the fear is that I'm gonna fail that my plants are gonna die, that one day I'm gonna die, that I'm gonna lose the ones I love, that I'm, that I'm gonna lose. And really when you think about it, the root of all of our fear, I think for humans, because we're fragile and mortal, is that we one day will die. And as Christians, there's something on the other side of death that we can hold to. And so I think I was listening to John O'Donohue, who's, um, was a Catholic priest and then turned poet, and I've read a lot of his work here on Reasons to Hope. And he has this amazing talk. It's really hard to find on the internet, but uh, if you dig around, it's called Love is the Only Antidote to Fear. And in this talk, he says, like the poet Carpenter used to say, you're meant to have the freedom of the sons and daughters of God. And you think about that freedom from fear of the sons and daughters of God. What does that mean? Well, he says what he loves about the Christian faith is that 
God was willing to come down on earth and become fully human and take the full hit of fragility of humanity. Like come down into the mud and clay and just take the full, the full hit. And it makes me think about what we talked about around Easter, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane and he's walking with his fears and he's walking through them and he doesn't just get to skip over it. He actually literally walks through his fears all the way into death. And then his fears are transformed and there's this great hope on the other side, which becomes our hope. So a lot of thinking over here as I'm trying to paint my deck and plant my seeds, but I, it just really boils down to this simple sort of look at like, what are our fears trying to tell us? And then also not just what are they trying to tell us, but what does that actually mean? What are they really made of? And so there's this story John O'Donoghue tells, it's super simple. There's this guy, he's condemned to spend a night in a jail cell with a super deadly snake. It's not like a benevolent therapy, like, you know, go ahead and just like breathe through it, snake. It's like, I'm gonna kill you, I am out to get you, snake. And so he's totally in the corner opposite the snake, just staring at it, like not even daring to breathe all night long, hoping he doesn't wake it up. And the next morning he sees the light come in and he's like, oh my gosh, that snake was even bigger than I thought. I cannot wait for my captors to come and release me. I'm so glad I only have to stay one night in this jail. And as more light floods the cell, it becomes apparent to him that what he thought was a snake was actually just a pile of rope. So it's a simple story, but I just wonder as we start to really look at our fear in the light, what is it made of ultimately? And thinking about light that exposes fear, that reveals them for what they really are. Darkness is where fear thrives, but darkness doesn't exist without the light. And you think about the ways that shadow works and that, that light comes into play to reveal uh, the earth and the, and the sunrise and all of the ways that the color fills the atmosphere. And it's just amazing to see this out in creation, this metaphor of God's light. And if you think about in Psalms too, it's, uh, in Psalms it says, with you is a fountain of life. In your light, we see light. And so I would encourage you this week to think along with me on not only just what are our fears trying to tell us, but what are they actually made of? And when we look at them and when we learn to kind of live with them and, and, and listen to what they might be trying to tell us, where is the where does the light come into play? What can we what can we see on the other side of those fears? How can those fears be kind of where are our fears actually just a pile of coiled up rope versus a giant serpent ready to destroy us? So this week let's look at light. You can find more of my reflections on that at rootandvinenews.com. I would love to hear from you throughout the week. Hashtag reasons to hope. It's so good to see you all here. Um, I, I just want to close with a blessing from John O'Donohue since it's John O'Donohue Day, apparently. Um, this is called For Courage. When the light around you lessens and your thoughts darken until your body feels fear turn cold as stone inside. When you find yourself bereft of any belief in yourself and all you unknowingly leaned on has fallen. When one voice commands your whole heart and it is raven dark. Steady yourself and see that it is your own thinking that darkens your world. Search and you will find a diamond thought of light. Know that you are not alone and that this darkness has purpose. Gradually, it will school your eyes to find the one gift your life requires hidden within this night corner. Invoke the learning of every suffering you have suffered. Close your eyes. Gather all the kindling about your heart to create one spark. That is all you need to nourish the flame that will cleanse the dark of its weight of festered fear. A new confidence will come alive to urge you toward higher ground where your imagination will learn to engage difficulty at its most rewarding threshold. Thank you all. We will see you next week. I've got a really special guest, so stay tuned for that. And I just am so glad to see you here. Blessings to you all. Thank you.